Welcome back. It's time for the news schmooze. Maybe I'll have to develop new gesturing mm-hmm. things. Carm, you work on your gestures. We're back. Because I'm not supposed to. Carm, I forgot to ask. Before we went on air, it drives me crazy because I was lecturing you about speaking into the mic. And your question is, how does my hair look? You're, you're just like my wife. Like you don't care about the substance, you care about your hair. I nev- you know, before I go on air, I, ne- I, don't, I do not look in the mirror. Because you like that disheveled artist look. And by the way, it drove me, I did a story the other day, a great story about a Ukrainian mom who had to walk like close to 20 miles with her baby. And, great- her, and her luggage. And her luggage. And I do this story, I put it together, throw it together, and my photographer whose name I won't mention, forgets to tell me that my wire is protruding at a bizarre angle, and you can see my entire IFB, my earpiece, which drives me crazy. But, so what did you think of uh, David Sampson? Joel, <laughs> this is like the reverse. <laughs> Usually I give it away Wait. as a secret, the secret that we already saw him, and <laughs> now today we are going backwards, we and haven't. I never even met the guy. We I think he's wonderful. <laughs> He's articulate. I saw some um, of have, his podcast. We have not interviewed him yet. We're doing this out of chronological order, so it was a trick question for Carm, but you thought he was great. Ooh, I like this new gesticulation on the side. You thought he was great, Carm. David Sampson. Yes, terrific. Yeah, really a was, wonderful guy. <laughs> what was the favorite thing that he said uh, of yours today? I, I, he had so many unbelievable <laughs> quotes that I don't even know which one. Let me think about it. Do you see it. how well Carmelo lies because we have not interviewed him? This is what she does to me in real life. Okay, on to the new schmooze. Russian forces, we are in the middle of this war, even though this will come out probably a week after this news, but Russian forces on Tuesday damaged Bobby Yar. You know what that is, Karn? Yeah, that was killing me. In a previous interview with uh, Dara Horn, mm-hmm. we I, talked about it. Uh, we talked about it, and I mentioned that there was a famous Russian poet who made a very touching, long poem about Babi Yar. At that time, the Russians made beautiful points about Babi Yar, and now they are destroying the museum with all the evidence. So Russian forces damaged Bobby Yards, one of Europe's most prominent Holocaust memorials, during a brutal onslaught of Kiev, Ukraine's capital, which used to be Kiev, but that is the Russian pronunciation, so now the entire world is pronouncing it Kiev. Now this damage quickly drew international condemnation. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky and his chief of staff said the Russian military had bombed a nearby radio tower that killed five people and damaged the Holocaust Memorial. And he tweeted, Zelensky, who is a Jew himself and the child of Holocaust survivors. Grandchild. Grandchild. Grandchild of Holocaust survivors tweeted out, to the world, what is the point of saying never again for 80 years if the world stays silent when a bomb drops on the same site of Babinyar, at least five killed, history repeating? Do you agree with that? No. I think that the tower was probably too close. Do you, do you think it was intentional in any way? Think, uh, very honestly, I don't. you think Putin gives a crap about a Holocaust memorial? I think that he didn't want to bring that into the mix also. I think he would have rather avoided our comments now and the news that he bombed it. And now this is uh, interesting. Uh, connected but different. Israeli Foreign Minister Yair Lapid said Monday his office had helped 4,000 Israelis leave, as you would say, Ukraine or Ukraine since Russia invaded last week. He says, we will do everything to not leave any Israeli behind or any Jew behind, told reporters that. Many of the Israelis repatriated were members of the Arab minority who make up 20% of the Jewish state's population. A student who identified himself only as Hussein described a harrowing escape from the war zone. For four days, we've been sleeping in staircases and train stations. We had a really difficult time without food. I was in Ukraine, as you would say, Carmela, in Kharkiv. It's the last year of my studies, but now I left everything to return. Uda Abu Sayed, whose son Mohammed returned on the flight, said she had been terrified for his safety. 
What does it say about Israel that it's helping its Arab citizens who professors at Northwestern think that the Israelis are poisoning with gas, that the Israelis are actually helping them repatriate and escape U- Ukraine? I am not going there. You know, my stepfather used to say that Jews always have to bring the Jews into all discussions. Like, if you talk about an elephant, you have to say the elephant and the Jews. No, I'm not going there. Carmel, I did that entirely for you. because. Well, I am very, very uh, yeah. <laughs> grateful that you thought this would be my topic. You're a big Zionist, so I... Uh... No, but there is something different that's very interesting. Uh, the... The Russians are in Ukraine, and I read something very- Can you say Ukraine, or you have to say Never Ukraine? Mind. Never mind. How do you say it Hungarian? Ukraina in Serbian. Ukra- Ukraina. And how do you say it Hungarian? Ukraina. Ukraina. That's why you say Ukraine. Anyway, um, it's a very important thing for the morale of a country that when a soldier is killed, you don't leave him rotting on the bat- battlefield you take him back to your country for burial. And there are rumors, I don't know if it's propaganda or what it is, that the Russians now, the way they are disorganized in some way, they are leaving Russian soldiers all over uh, Ukraine and they are not um, taking them out of the country. Carmela. What has that got to do with the price of rice in China? Did I mention that you can get Shirts and hats soon on survivingthesurvivor.com. Yeah, that's how we're going to get rich. Okay. Um, Last story. I decided I'm going to start to include stories that I am covering here in Miami as part of my third day job uh, for CBS News here in Miami. And last night, I covered an interesting rally in Miami Beach. Uh, the heart of the gay community, one of the gay communities in South Florida. There is a bill currently making its way through the state legislature here called the Don't Say Gay Bill. It's not the actual name, but that's what it's become known as, the Don't Say Gay Bill. And essentially, um, what it says is that for kids in K through 3, they are not allowed to speak about any kind of sexual orientation, straight to. Um, issues of sexual orientation. Any issues of sexual orientation, none. But it's targeted toward the gay, lesbian community. In other words, if you have two mothers, uh, let's say, for example, I, had, I was married to a lovely man with a nice thick beard, and Vida went to school, and someone said to her, Vida, how second, come... Second grade. And someone said, Vida, how come your father's husband has such a beautiful dark beard they would not be allowed to discuss that at all they would be directed to just to ask their parents for information and listen listen i didn't see the law you didn't see the law the law is that you don't that is not where it ends i know that where it ends that it, it was left open the upper limit of age, so it could go all the way to high school. Correct. So they left it also open ended. It said, or were otherwise age appropriate issues surrounding this. And that, or in the law, in the legalese, leaves it open to interpretation for kids all the way through high school. So if someone is in high school and they know that they are gay or lesbian, or transgender, they cannot bring that issue up. It, now, you, they cannot bring it to school. They cannot bring it to school. Now, school is supposed to be a safe haven and a place of education. What do you think of all this, Carmela? Because you had a surprising reaction, and I don't want to, no pun intended, out you here. But you seem to agree no, in a I, weird way with I the I think which, they should put an age limit on it. But when they ask an eight-year-old, do you want to be a girl or a boy? And the little boy says, I want to be a girl because uh, the sister got a new bicycle or something. Totally rational. And then the school- This t- is not that. This is kids who are identifying as a completely different gender. I profiled a little kid named Cooper. Since two years old, he's been dressing as a girl. He says that no, he feels No, this is not limited to that. It's all 
anyway, I've... What happened to your... Um, my liberal views? You I have liberal tremendous... Views. What happened to your... I uh, have tremendous liberal views, but let me now specify because... I don't want uh, I'm so tired from working so many hours and oh, being woken up by my child. What happened to your like sensitivity? Let me say something. You become like a callous older woman. He's like What if you had a grandchild who was transgender? Uh, I wouldn't want the school to decide what to do with that child. I But th- hold on, that's a different argument. No, no, you- no, wait a second. It's not a di- I, I, even when we had the private discussion, which you shouldn't bring up on the podcast. Well, I always will. Oh, then I cannot say anything anymore. Yeah. I felt that as long as they're discussing little children, because now it's specified up to third grade, third grade, uh, they shouldn't, they, if they say, uh, could, I do, could I have a penis, a little girl says, then they would say, you have to ask your mommy and daddy, this is not for the school. But I would cut it at the at the high school level or junior high school level when, uh, let's say, parents are judgmental or prejudiced and the child has nowhere to turn and turns towards the school. I think there should be an age limit on it. But don't worry, whatever I say, this being a conservative state, they will vote it in anyway. 100% getting voted in. DeSantis the governor of the great state of Florida has already indicated that he is going to sign this into law, the so-called don't say gay bill. Um, the parents who are the parents of this who were young demonstrating, child, who were demonstrating. Yeah, and this young child, Cooper, who is, he's what is known as gender, gender nonconformist. So he identifies as a boy. He is a boy, but he says he likes to dress as a girl. He says, well, unquote, I know, I know cases like that from my pr- Past. He says that that's his quote unquote style. But in 2022, when we have a war in Ukraine and we've got gun, we got high schools getting shot up and we've got issues with the economy, we got to worry about a kid who thinks he's gay. And part of this bill, by the way, uh, a, big, a big part of this bill, which has since changed because of the outcry, was going to force teachers to out students so in other words if a student came up to them oh in, confi- God. in confidence and oh said my I God. am gay please don't tell my parents oh my or, God. they were going to force them oh my to be God. outed that's I, normal no that's to- but they didn't put it in the law they, they, it was in the law until about a week ago it well uh, well, uh, well you know a week ago somebody was alive who is today dead well so I asked uh, I interviewed this family and the sister turns out as a lesbian who was a teacher and she quit her teaching job here in Florida because of this don't say gay bill that's about to become law. And I said, flat out, what do you think of these legislators? And she said, who are sponsoring this bill? And you know what she said? She said, I think they're gay. And I think they've got their own homophobic issues. One of the greater sound bites I've ever gotten. And I put that in my piece. Bravo. Anyway, uh, I am still a bleeding liberal, and I still believe that uh, I love the gays because they are another persecuted minority. Like the Jews. Like the Jews.